everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Bailey. If you haven't already met me before, I am going to be going over Intermediate JavaScript's lesson two with you today. So let's get into the schedule. Just as a reminder, if you haven't taken our classes before or are not yet familiar with the schedule, we begin class at 4.15 and we end at 5. Just keep in mind this is specific time. From 5 to 5.10, we have break. And then from 5.10 to 5.45, we have the second half class. Then class ends at 5.45. As an overview for this lesson, we'll be learning about return, we'll be learning the difference between local and global variables, and we will make a calculator project. So as a review from, uh, sorry, as a review from intermediate lesson one, we have these two questions. Think about these questions, and then when you're ready, you can unpause the video and I'll go over the answers. The first one says, how do you declare a function? The second one says, what are parameters, or you can give an ex ex <laughs> example or explain. There you go. So for the first one, we can declare a function using this command, var name of function equals function. Then we have our parameters inside of the parentheses, curly brackets, and then inside the curly brackets, we actually define what happens and executes inside of the function. Our second question is what are parameters, give an example or explain. Parameters are things we pass as inputs into the function. So looking back onto our answer for the first question, inside of the parentheses, we have those parameters. Think of those as an input. So the user will input numbers or values. Those numbers or values, whatever they are, will go back into the original function. It'll go through whatever you instructions you listed, so the body. It'll take those values and it will output it onto your project. So going on more deeper into actually using functions within JavaScript, we're going to be learning about, about the return function. So sometimes you want the function to calculate a value. For example, if you recall earlier, we have a calculator project coming up. You can add two numbers to get a sum. So here we have var add equals function num1, num2. So breaking this down before we get into the second line, var add is the name of our function, add so we call on add later on. We can add together two numbers, num1, num2. So I can add together five plus eight, and hopefully my var sum is equal to, right, 13. On line two, we have var sum equals num1 plus num2 semicolon. This function doesn't actually do anything because it does the adding, but it does not return a value. So going into the return function, you must return, uh, return whatever the sum is from the function. So think of it as an execution command, right? So we have calculated using the var sum variable, but we have not actually told it to execute that command. This way, our function gives our code an output we can use in the future. So for example, we can use a text function to actually output the sum onto the screen. Without the return part, we would not actually output anything because the code has not been executed. Okay, and actually going into the text function, which I briefly mentioned earlier, the text function allows us to print messages onto the project screen. Text message, x, y, you might recall this from beginning JavaScript. Um, the message, as you can see, the green text right there, that is considered a string. The messages must be put into a pair of quotes because this calls the data type into a string. So whatever characters, they can be numbers, special characters, they can be um, just letters, whatever, words, sentences, anything that goes inside those two quotes, whether they are single or double, it will be considered a string, one value. And as a really quick note, if you call it a text command without a fill command, it won't show up and it'll, it'll look like your background. So make sure there is a fill command before that because you can change the color of your text that way. Otherwise, it'll kind of just disappear into your project. All right. So just as a really quick recap for a return function, functions that return values can be used to help calculate slash compute data. They can also be used together in expressions. So for example, var larger sum equals add one, two plus add three fourths. So let's say we had our add function, right? This is my add function. I'm going to represent it just by as a block. So I have my opening parentheses and I have my closing parentheses and semicolon. So whatever is in here, we're not going to worry about it. We'll treat it as a black box, as we learned before in lesson one. We add together the very, sorry, add together the parameters one, two. So these are the 
um, inputs we get from the user. So one plus two and three plus four. So we are taking the num one, num two, which is one and two, we are adding them together and we get three. We are taking num one and num two, which is now going to be three and four according to this new command. Three and four is now going to be seven. So equals 10. Then var larger sum or just larger sum, that variable should now equal 10. Okay, then we have another concept. This is called local versus global, sorry, global variables. Local variables are variables you create inside of functions. So let's say going back to our fish project from lesson one, a local variable would be considered tail width or tail height because we declared them within our fish function. If we were to change the value of tail height or tail width or add on to it or call on it outside of those curly brackets, we would get an error because they are considered a local variable. Global variables are variables that are declared outside of functions, which means they can be used anywhere regardless of in or outside a function. So the easiest way to remember this is local is nearby. So let's take in a neighborhood, anything within that neighborhood that neighborhood can use, but maybe anyone from outside the neighborhood can't go into the community pool, for example, or it doesn't have the gate code if it's a gated community. A global variable means it's accessible to the entire code. So any place you are able to call on said global variables. The best way to tell is if you are indenting things correctly for syntax, Global variables will not be inside any curly brackets generally on their own. Local variables will be inside most likely indented, especially if it is within several functions. All right, putting them more into an example here. Sum is a local variable and it can only be used inside of an add function. So breaking down this really quick, on our first line we have var add equals function. So this is the add function that they're talking about. This add function spans from line one, two, three, four to line five. I'm going to write that down just so it makes things clearer. So anything between line one and line five is considered a part of my function, my add function. You can see on line two, we have var sum equals num1 plus num2. If I was to call on sum out here, we would get an error. And you can see the comment error because sum does not exist outside of the function. Because my text command is on line six and it is not a part of my add function, the sum variable is not accessible from where we call on the text function. So in this case, var sum would be my local variable. For text to be able to use a variable, it would need to be a global variable. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started on a calculator project. Make a calculator with four functions that can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Here is a template to get started. Let me see if I can some way show this to you guys. You might be able to, I don't, the template, if you want to access it, I would check with your teacher. Um, otherwise, once you get back to class, you can use it. You don't need a template for this project, however. So here we just have the basic title, and then we have extra challenges written inside of here, but you don't really have, you can ignore this part. This is just a description for yourself. Make sure you save this project. And what you can do is you can also create a spin-off if you don't know what that is. That's just creating a copy of a Khan Academy project. So it's just telling you the instructions and I'll break them down really quick since you might not have access to the actual template. In front of every function, we have var add, var subtract, var divide, var multiply, and these are the challenge things. So we'll ignore that. Create a function called add that adds two numbers and returns a result. So add might be pretty easy because we've gone over using add as an example for most of the time we've talked about re the return function, right? You can take two, two uh, par parameters, you can name them whatever. For in my case, I would like to name them num1, num2. We would add num2 into the sum variable, then we would return sum. And later down here in our project, we can actually put in the text to output it onto our screen. So go ahead and take this time to work on that project. And once you're done, or if you're stuck, you can unpause the video and I'll go through some of the extra hints we can show.
All right. So at this point, you should either be done with your project or ready to move on with extra challenges or need a hint. So here we have extra challenges for those of you that are done already. Add a function that calculates the perimeter of a rectangle given the base and height. Second one, add a function that converts hours into minutes. So for example, if you inputted one hour, you would return in 60 minutes. Or add another function even than that. That could be exponents if you started to learn the quadratic function, if you've started to learn area, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, save your project. Oh, so it looks like we're getting close to the end. So I'll go over this project with you guys without the slideshow. Really quick, just as for everyone, save your project right now. If you haven't already given it a title, go ahead and check on your profile if you're able to access it. That's the best way just to double check that yes, it's available on my profile so you can access it again in case you need to show it to your teacher later on. Let's go back to that calculated project. I'm gonna open up from here. Actually, I might be able to access my own if I'm not logged in. Okay, forget that. Okay. So I'm going to ignore the perimeter and the hours one. And so those are the extra challenges for those of you that aren't clear. So right here, we have this first 15 lines, they're just fluff code. That is just code that doesn't actually affect our program. So here at line 16, var add equals function, num1, num2. We are creating our own function, right? Then we are returning num1 plus num2. Here, we are doing the exact same thing, except we are returning num1 minus num2. And you can start to see the pattern where on all of these um, add, subtract, divide, and multiply, the only difference we're doing is changing the name of the function and then changing the operation, the math operation that we're returning. So in this case, we're multiplying num2, num and here we are dividing num1, num2. All right, so going down to the very bottom, I have var1 equals 10, sorry, var num1 equals 10, and var num2 equals 25. So if I change any of these values, it actually changes up here in real time on the screen. It takes that 35, and it takes it into our functions. So let's say, for example, my subtraction function, right? 35 minus 25, 35 is num1, 25 is num2. It subtracts, sorry, it returns the subtraction of 35 minus 25. Then on line 24, you can see this is my subtraction statement. I say num1, which is the variable, so 35. And you can actually kind of see that on the time, I'll write that out. So this is the num1 part, num1 plus, and this plus is to add on to the message. So we are not just having one value in the message, we are having multiple. So num1 plus, and then the string, which is the actual plus sign, plus num2, which is 25, plus the equal sign, which is the string right here, plus the actual function. So add num1, num2, which would output 60. So in this case, this value is technically going to be 60. So this is my message. Oh, let's actually do everything now. This right here, from the very start to the end of the function, this is my message. I can't write really well with my mouse, sorry. This is my message parameter. If you recall how text works, we have message, number, number, and those two numbers stand for x and y coordinates. So my first line of text will begin at 2050, which is right here, somewhere, wherever this line starts, right? And from here, you can see the main difference within these numbers is we are adding 25 to each y value. So there is a gap of 25 units between each line of text. And then for 54 to 56, very similar concepts. We are just changing the sign operation. And then we are changing the actual function that we are adding on to the end. And that's pretty much it. For the challenges, you apply the same concepts. You would you know, add in your own return values or if you were making your own, let's say we, you're doing, what was the example I gave earlier? Like area, right? You would multiply those two values together or maybe you're doing area of a triangle. That would be a slightly different um, equation and you would write in that equation depending on those parameters. And then you can test them down here on the bottom.
All right. So if you have any questions with your project, if there's any syntax issues, I would recommend trying to go through your project with the oh knows buddy, er oh, sorry, oh knows error buddy. He genuinely gives pretty good tips. Otherwise, if you have any questions, double check with your teacher either next time you go to class or go to office hours, which down here, 4.15 to 5.15 p.m. from Tuesdays, sorry, on Tuesdays and Sundays. They are drop in, so show up at any time. Then our Zoom meeting is 955-355-1000. You'll also get this in a email or a message from the senior mentor of your class. Last thing we'll do here today is go over the recap for this lesson, which is intermediate lesson two. So the first question, what does return do? Second question, is bar a local or global variable? And what about food? For this second question, you are going to be referring to this picture down here of, or this text really, var foo equals two, var my func equals function, var bar equals foo plus three. So go ahead and take a moment to think of these questions and when you are ready, you can unpause this video. All right, for our first question, return makes it so our functions have outputs, which can be reassigned to variable. And I like to think of them as an execution command. So they're kind of like the go you can compute, right? Second question, is bar a local or global variable? What about foo? So you can see here, and this was my big tip earlier, if you see an indent, foo, that's not the right color, we'll use white. If you see an indent like this, generally that means it is probably a local variable because it is inside of something else. So let's take, for example, uh, the foo variable, right? So the first one, var foo equals two, because there is nothing being, it's not encapsulated inside of any other command or function, we can consider that a global variable, meaning you can call on that later on. Var bar, var bar however, that is a local variable. All right. All right, so again, office hours. And in conclusion, you have finished learning about functions and made a calculator project. So nice job, guys. Make sure you save those projects. There is no autosave. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye and have a good day.